Hey, sweeties. It's Sweet Savant. I'm Demetra. Thank you so much for joining me. We're going to do another test of a nonstick pan set. Yes, I've done the caraway cookware. I've done the always pan. Today we are going to do the green pan. We'll unbox it. We'll test it out. And then I'm going to tell you why I'm sending it back. Yeah. Spoiler alert. It's another one that didn't work out. We'll get into it. But first, please subscribe to Sweet Savant. Hit that thumbs up, that notification bell. And let's get into this green pan set review. So this is the original green pan Valencia Pro 11 piece ceramic non-stick set. I purchased it off of Amazon after watching the America's Test Kitchen review where it came out highly rated and I wanted to give it a try for myself. But as soon as we get out of the box, <laughs> y'all, we got problems. Look at this. Chipped right out of the packaging. The nonstick is damaged and I mean, if you look closely, I mean, it looks like it is actually dented. This is the smaller saucepan that came with the set. And now here is the Dutch oven. And guess what? This one chipped and a little bit dented too. Yeah. Unfortunate. So we already know <laughs> this is going back. This is going back. Um, really very sad. But let's let's take a look at the whole set. So let's go over what comes in the box for this set 11 piece green pan set the valencia collection and i bought this because it was um reviewed on america's test kitchen and it came out highly rated it's got the eight inch fry pan nine and a half i'm sorry yeah nine and a half inch fry pan and 11 inch fry pan 1.7 quart saucepan, 3.3 quart saucepan, a 3.3 quart saute pan, and a 5.4 quart casserole. Now the lid for the casserole is the same size as the lid for the 3.3 quart saute pan. And this lid, both of these lids fit the 9.5 inch fry pan. So you can use it there. And the lid for the 3.3 quart saucepan fits on the eight inch fry pan. So the only thing that no lid will fit um, from this set is the 11 inch fry pan. So two of these um, pans arrived chipped. So I know I'm gonna send the whole set back, um, but I do want to give the 11 inch fry pan a try. I'm gonna do that fried egg test and see if I can fry and scramble an egg um, with no oil, with a little oil, how's it work? Just to give the non-stick uh, coating a try. And that is um, a ceramic non-stick coating but um i already know the set is going back because it's already damaged the green pan valencia collection set also came with three pan protectors they call it a bonus bonus pan protectors they say that um the pans are metal utensil safe that it is a uh, ceramic non-stick enhanced with minerals and it is um induction safe armor body technology i don't know about all that because it's already damaged but let's see and then on the side of the box it tells you a little bit more metal utensil safe professional grade i don't know that and what does that mean professional grade what professional i don't know um oven and broiler safe I read in the instruction manual that the pans, the um, nonstick pans are safe up to 600 degrees. And it says here the glass lids are oven safe. 
up to 425 degrees. You know how much that's important to me. I need a pan that can go from stovetop to oven to broiler. That's important. Um, tells you what armored body technology is. Innovative reinforced interior technology for maximum strength. Okay, dishwasher safe. Glass lids, tempered glass. Oven safe handles. Quick heating, does recommend that you heat it on um, low to medium heat. And durable hard anodized exterior. So the exterior of the pan is anodized. So it's um, an aluminum pan with a ceramic coating, stainless steel handles, and a magneto induction base. I don't know what that is, but apparently it's also a Marvel supervillain. That nonstick coating also covers the rivets there so that when you're cooking something, nothing sticks to those rivets. I think that's a nice touch. Let's get it on the fire and give it a little test run. We're going to first fry an egg with no oil. And I'm doing it with no oil because that's what I get asked um, to do most of the time is to test uh, how to fry and scramble an egg with no oil added to the nonstick pan. And I guess that is the true uh, best test of a nonstick surface. How does it do with no additional oil? I mean, when I'm cooking on a regular basis, I'm using a little bit of oil or butter in the pan. But, you know, let's take a look and see how it does. And yeah, there it goes. It is nonstick with no oil. You know, you, we got a little browning on the bottom of our egg. And as it continues to cook, it's sticking just a little bit. Let's see. It takes a little bit of effort to get the egg up, but not too much. Our yolk didn't break. So, I mean, I'm going to call that a win. Now, you should let the pan cool completely before you try to clean it. I'm just gonna see if I can wipe out the leftover egg out of the pan with a paper towel. And it's stuck a, it's stuck a little bit, it's stuck a little bit. Um, not excessive, but now let's try a scrambled egg, same deal. Scrambled egg, no oil in the pan. And it's working pretty good. You know, it scrambles around in there, not excessive sticking. Just some very, very slight sticking in the bottom of the pan, but the green pan manufacturers do recommend that you do put just a little bit of oil or butter in the bottom of your pan as you're cooking with it. So this is a viewer requested test when I do non-sticks, um, non-stick pan reviews, just to see how truly non-stick it is. So there's our egg, not bad at all. Scrambled with no oil. So yeah, there's just a couple little bits that stuck onto the pan that take a little bit of effort to remove, but not much at all. I'm gonna call that a win as well. And now let's do a cheddar frico. That's right. We're gonna put some shredded cheddar cheese in the bottom of our pan and heat it up, let it melt and see if it sticks, what happens. And oh my gosh, the melted cheese like <laughs> is the best part of any quesadilla or burger or anything like that. So, you know, you're gonna get a little melty cheese on your pans and it melts just fine. And you know, it looks like it's heating evenly. The surface is heating evenly. There was a little more uh, shredded cheese in the center, which is why that hasn't melted yet. But if you look all around the outside, it's melting rather evenly. So I think the pan itself works well. We'll just let that bubble for a few minutes. You can see the, the fat starting to separate from the cheese. And as we cook this, our cheese will get nice and crispy on the bottom. And it moves around the pan, no problem. No sticking, but again, you know, some of that oil has come out of the cheese. And now, of course, you know, we gotta grab a tortilla and put it on there. So, so far nothing is sticking. 
we can flip it over you know pretty easily we're gonna let it get even a little more cooked on that cheese side and get a little bit more crispy so let's flip it right back over and let it go for a few minutes longer and you can see the edges have gotten nice and crispy now and our tortilla is starting to puff okay this looks super tasty you can put some avocado you can put some of that scrambled egg on there or a little shredded lettuce a little salsa mm, this is a mighty fine snack so if you've got a good nonstick pan give this a try now let's see did our cheese get crispy listen closely and get ready for that crunch mmm it's tasty and our pan you know it's the, a little oil did come out so there's even more non-stick with a little oil in there so there's no uh, issue with that at all. Let's do one more quick test and make a frittata. We're going to head outside to our raised bed garden. And if you want to learn more about these Keter Easy Grow raised beds that I've been growing my garden in this summer, I'll put a link to that video in the description box. And we're going to get some asparagus and just poach them a little bit to get tender put a little oil and just keep that up we have seven eggs i only have seven eggs <laughs> left in the fridge i would normally use eight and we're just gonna beat them up i love this little french coil whisk is it necessary no is it fun yes <laughs> i'll put links in the description box so you can check out all of these products put about a half cup of half and half i had a half a pack of borzon cheese in the fridge and I'm just going to crumble that up and mix that in. A little bit of salt and pepper. It's super simple. You know, frittata is one of those go-to recipes that you can, you know, a kind of clean out the fridge thing. I am going to put a little bit of oil in the bottom of the pan. Some spring onions, some scallions, I should say. A little bit of the asparagus. Some cherry tomatoes from my garden and a little salt and pepper in there to season it up everything is moving around well nothing is sticking to the pan and now let's pour in our egg cream and borzon cheese mixture and when i'm making a frittata i like to just move the batter the batter the the, the eggs around the pan and get the cooked egg sort of mixed in to the raw egg and that helps it cook even faster and so you can see as I drag my uh, silicone spatula through that nothing is sticking, not sticking much at all. So that's working out well. We'll just stir that around and mix that cooked egg in with the raw egg. And my oven is already preheated to 350 degrees. So I'm gonna pop this into the oven in a bit. As soon as we stir it up, I'm gonna stir it up for a bit more. I like to get it sort of most of the way cooked uh, in on the stove top over a gentle heat. I don't want it to get too brown, but I want the egg to get nice and creamy and custardy. So we stir that up a bit and then we're going to place it into the oven. There's still quite a bit of liquid egg in there because we want it to be tender. We don't want it to be too hard. Now let's pop it into the oven for eight to 10 minutes at 350 degrees. You can always add all kinds of things to this, some sauteed spinach, some cheddar cheese, some ham if you want, bacon, super delicious. So I let this cool for a bit and now I'm going to ease the frittata out of the pan. Unfortunately, I think I let it cool for a bit too long. When I first took it out of the oven, it could slide around the pan a lot easier it cooled for about five minutes and so it still is coming out but the egg since it's pretty delicate and <laughs> my tomatoes are rolling all over the place um, it was not as easy to get out of the pan as I would have liked it to be but that's on me that's my fault because I should have taken it out of the pan while like straight out of the oven and then out of the pan um, I'm using a cutting board, a wooden cutting board, not putting this hot pan um, onto the counter because we don't want to scorch our counter. But you can see it broke a little bit, but 
again, I think if it had been warmer, it would have come out much easier. And you can see there's not, you know, not much sticking at all on the bottom of the pan. So, I mean, I would call that a win as well. Now, remember I used the 11 inch uh, green pan Valencia Pro. If I had used one of the smaller pans, we'd have gotten a much thicker frittata, but I used a larger pan and it cooked more quickly because you don't have that sort of deep dish <laughs> frittata to uh, cook through. So we got a nice little bit of browning on the bottom of the egg. And the inside of our omelet is cooked through. It's nice and moist and delicate. Now let's see if we can clean out our pan easily. Now this is just the, after the pan is cooled. And I'm just going to wipe it with a paper towel and see what comes out easier. And there's a little bit that uh, didn't come out right away with just a paper towel, the dry paper towel. So let's get it under some running water and wash it up with a drop of dish detergent and that same paper towel. And then you can see it's nice and clean with no effort at all. So, I mean, the nonstick works great. Um, how long will it work great? I don't know because I'm sending it back. It's always so hard to get this stuff packed back up the same way that it came. I think I'll put one of these in there. That. And maybe that in there. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Well, there you have it. Is it nonstick? Yes. Nonstick right out of the box that worked well. Scrambling an egg with no oil, frying an egg with no oil. I mean, it worked, but I mean, it was chipped right out of the box. So, am I going to order another pan and give it a shot? Maybe. Not right now. We're going to move on to something else. And honestly, do you even need an 11 piece set? I don't know. It came with a lot of frying pans. I don't think you need that many. So the set is big. I think it's too big. And um, I mean, it, it chipped. It was chipped when it got here. So that's unfortunate. It was highly recommended by America's Test Kitchen. But unfortunately, no, it didn't work out. So. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to Sweet Savant. Hit that thumbs up, that notification bell, and come on back and we'll see what I try next. Oh yes, I do want to try the Misen nonstick skillet and non-carbon uh, steel pan. So I'm going to place an order for those and we're going to give those a try. So come on back for that. Y'all have a delicious day.